Welcome to Sigma TV and today I'm extremely excited to be joined by Dario Nani from Akamai. How are you Dario? How are things going? Hey Trudy, thank you for the introduction. Very well, very well. We are doing good so personally as Dario and also as a company. The world moved online and that's what we do since 20 years. So it's strange and surprising, but 2020 is a good time for us under this point of view. Well, I'm really looking forward to talking to you and finding out more about what you do. But well, let's just start right off there with something you've just said, uh, because, of course, for most people around the world, uh, COVID-19, which has affected almost every single person on the planet, has been very, very bad news. But let me just ask you, you just said, you know, it's been kind of good for you guys after 20 years. Everybody this year is online. So I'm guessing it's actually been you're, you're one of the few people that this has been a good year for. Yeah, I have to say that I'm really sorry for who had personal um, unfortunate events because as health wise, it's a sad news for everyone, for us as well. Uh, but as a, as a business, some people is, is pretty... Uh, in the right spot at the right time. And it's not just us. I mean, Elon Musk just made $100 billion this year. It's a ridiculous amount of money, right? But we're doing well too. Not that good, but quite good. Uh, we sort of invented internet together with the uh, professor Tim, Tim Barnes-Lee at the MIT uh, back in the 90s. And our professor is currently our CEO. Um, it's uh, actually a colleague of the inventor of internet itself. And we forecast this, this huge growth of traffic since the beginning. And generally it does grow 20, 30% each year. But this year, well, more than double. So the amount of traffic that we are delivering, it's exactly more than double than last year. Because most of the people that uh, were unsure what to do next, they got convinced that this is the time to move online. This is amazing. And as you rightly said, you know, uh, COVID has been tragic for a, a huge amount of people. But I am really thrilled to be able to report on a positive side of this. Now, we're going to talk about what you do uh, and, and what your company does. We're going to put it in the context of gaming, because this is something that I, I want to bring it down, because what you do is phenomenal and there's so many aspects to it. But just to, to put this into context, into real basic language, I want to take a quick journey through computer games, starting with games like Chucky Egg, I can remember, and Frogger uh, on the BBC or Acorn Electron or the Spectrum uh, way, way, way back in the beginning of, of uh, us really uh, getting to our heads around uh, computers and computer uh, opportunities. Then moving on to something like Resident Evil or Tomb Raider on the first PlayStation, and now coming right up to date with the modern esports industry. So we've seen so much uh, progress in a very short period of time. What are the most challenging demands in 2020 right now, specifically regarding a gaming platform and a, a, you as a platform provider for an on ga a, a online gaming provider? That's a very, very interesting question. Um, on visual capitalism, there was a research that showed that what's happening in the last five to 10 years is that most of the games are now played online through a mobile platform. So the trend was this, there were console, there were physical hardware in the 80s and in the 90s, especially in Japan. Then it became digital through dedicated hardware. Then it became on, on the Mac, on the, on the platform, on the PC. And now it's becoming purely online and a lot of mobile. And this poses two big points for the interaction because online games means that you are playing with other real players that are somewhere else in the world and you want real-time interaction. So speed is an essential factor to enjoy the game. And another, another important factor is that the graphics, the music, the videos are amazing. You see a 3D player, it looks like an actual real guy there in front of you, talking to you. And this means that there is a lot of data, there is a lot of complexity to deliver a smooth motion to deliver a great player experience. And this is where we come in. Actually, the peak of traffic has been around 200 terabit per second and has not been for streaming the elections, has not been for streaming any major sport events, has been because 
Fortnite and Halo released the software upgrade, and this was the most high spike of traffic of the entire internet in the history of internet itself for a game. So this is how big is gaming nowadays. This is, I mean, this is phenomenal. This is so far away from Frogger. You know, we, we, we're talking about something <laughs> yeah. completely, I don't know if you ever played it, but I can remember waiting for it to, to load just, uh, just as one of your, <laughs> one of your, your, uh, your wonderful testimonials talked about waiting for it to load. And now we take it for granted that we can have what we want when we want it right away. And so what is the biggest challenge apart from just the volume? Are there any other specific challenges to delivering that speed, but also, as you mentioned, that quality? Because we're talking about something that is, uh, that is so amazingly beautiful graphically. Of course, that has to, to, to have uh, for some very specifics to the platform as well, surely. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the, the main challenge that it needs to be uh, faced is that this traffic often comes in spikes. So it's all concentrated into a specific moment in which, for example, the, the software upgrade is released or in which all the gamers are playing or even attending a concert because Fortnite released, for example, a concert uh, because we couldn't do, I mean, artists cannot play music live easily anymore. And they're doing this within the games, uh, the, the platform nowadays. So this attracts a huge volume, uh, volume of users, of gamers, that sometimes are not even there for playing, are, even, are there for attending a virtual event. So this is a new trend that is moving huge volumes of traffic concentrated in spiky events. So with a platform like Akamai, you can offload most of these requests which will not need to go all the way until the, the origin server, the place where the game is actually hosted, because the Akamai distributed platform will answer most of these requests before they reach um, the, the, the infrastructure of the game provider and put them under stress or maybe even put them down. So it is very efficient uh, in terms of speed and reliability, but it's also creating good economy of scale. Because if you want to scale your infrastructure, for the maximum peak, then what you're going to do with all that stuff when you don't really need it, it's inefficient. So Akamai is creating very much efficiency through the internet itself. Uh, and this is, this is a major challenge we help our customer to face. Uh, another major challenge is the mobile experience. Many people are connected through mobile devices nowadays, everywhere in the world. And our network, our edge platform is actually distributed in the uh, telcos, in the mobile uh, operator, in the ISP, all around the world. Uh, we have, just in Italy, we have 16 or 17. And honestly, I don't know all of them because when you cover the first three, four operators, maybe you cover 90 plus percent of, of, the, of the customers. But there are many small local uh, operators that we also cover as a platform. We have our server, they're called server because they serve the content. They are within this telcos and they put the content closer to the end user. So chances are that even if most of our audience doesn't know Akamai because it's a very uh, tech geeky company, so we talk only to IT people generally, but chances are that everyone uses Akamai at least once in their lifetime if they have seen a video online or if they play um, music and streaming on any major service from Spotify to, to any other. Well, you mentioned two things there that I just want to pick up on. You mentioned uh, these mm -hmm. hotspots um, and, uh, you know, when you stepping in and providing service when these hotspots come along, when these peak periods of traffic uh, are coming in and um, being able to, to manage that. But you also mentioned just then about the mobile devices. And, and of course, we are changing all the time in the way that we behave online. How do you stay one step ahead of the game. I mean, surely that that is is the reason. Users are very unforgiving if they can't get the service. We become very impatient. We if we don't get the service that we expect, we're very very un unforgiving. If we go onto a website or onto a game platform and it doesn't load instantly, we're like, okay, we're going off somewhere else. Not how you know, not in the, not like the days of AOL when there was a dial-up connection and you sat there waiting for it to come on board. So how do you anticipate the future? How do you stay ahead of the game? 
This is a very, very interesting question. Uh, I, am, I am very proud to say that our company is made by really passionate uh, people and they're passionate about technology. They're passionate about internet. And even our professor itself is, is a, a professor, is a CEO, but is a professor of applied mathematics. And there are a lot of purely um, technical scientists within Akamai that predict and write algorithms to, to understand what's gonna happen next online and which are the major trends and develop products, for example, security products that anticipate the most common threats that the industry is gonna be facing. Uh, this is why generally the majority of the, of the security threats that we stop we stop it not because we recognize it, we learn it on the client itself, but because we are predicting them, we are learning them from one specific client. And then we quickly replicate this learning in all our platform for all our customers to prevent that this is becoming a trend. So actually the best way to predict the future is shaping it, right? And Akamai is shaping the future of internet somehow, is participating actively in, in the committees that write the new languages, the new uh, software that we used for streaming video, for streaming or for delivering website in a secure way. Um, I think this is the, the safest way to predict it, right? I love your quote there. You said uh, the best Does way to anticipate your question? this. Yes, it does. And, I, and as I said, I, I loved what you said there. The best way to uh, anticipate the future is to shape it. Now, you also mentioned um, I, you're talking about security and cyber attacks and, and how to uh, handle those. And I'm going to just read back to you a quote uh, that I picked up from you guys. The gaming industry suffered nearly 10 billion credential stuffing and 152 million uh, web application attacks between 2018 and 2020. So first of all, if we go any further, stuffing and phishing. Explain this one to me. What are we talking about here? Yes, so there are many, many bad things that people want to do online to legit players. And these are posing a threat to the players, but also to the companies offering the games. So to make it simple, if you're doing a phishing attacks, you're trying to take the credentials of the legit players to use them. Why? Because most of the people use the same login and password and email and password for a wide set of services. And we all do Guilty. That. Guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. So they know and they use this against us. And so it's very important that the user itself are aware of this trend and take the necessary precaution. For example, just using more complex password, different password for different services. But also for the, the, the gaming provider side, it's, it's a threat because what happens? Okay, efficient attack was successful or any other um, attack on any other company was successful and they have been managing to exfiltrate the list of username and password. What do they do? They use a botnet to try this match of username and password of email and password on plenty of thousands of websites. And they also try thousands of passwords. So your infrastructure, it's stuffed, stuffed with requests, request of login, for example. This is very common in gaming and gambling. Many, because in gambling, actually, you, you have the same data as if it was a bank, you have your account, you have your money deposited there, you have your private information in there, your address and your bank details sometimes because it's connected. So once they're in, this is very dangerous. So they're causing problem to the game provider or to the operator because they are putting down the access to the legit user that actually wanna access the service because the service is stuffed with attempt from botnet. And this is a very common problem. On the other hand, it happens that legit user actually lose their account. And when they try to access, they find it blocked or they even find it without money anymore. And they complain with the gaming provider and the gaming provider will need to invest time and resources to analyze what happened. And maybe it's not even on their side. Maybe the issue is that the guy got the credentials stolen, but he didn't know. So security is a very holistic problem that needs to be faced in, in, in under every aspect in a 360 degrees approach because it touches everyone 
the gamer, the game provider, and all the infrastructures that provide service to the industry. This is, this is something complex. I, my, my engineering team can go deep down in details, but the big picture is this. You cannot solo security. You need a team that works around this because it's a complex pattern. Well, you also mentioned uh, when I had a look into what you guys do and, and a deeper, deeper look into how you work, you mentioned that this is something that, you know, we take for granted and, and something that's come out, Dario, from just talking to you this morning is whether it be speed, whether it be efficiency, whether it be quality of our online service from, uh, you know, where maybe it's a laptop or a phone and particularly in relation to cybersecurity, what you guys do at Akamai is you take care of the things that we take for granted. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's a, you know, an amazing thought for me just to, to dwell on is that we take so much of this for granted. We go online, we get a good service, uh, you know, we, we make a transaction, we're safe. We don't even question uh, what we do. But you obviously have right there over there with you guys a whole team of making sure that we still enjoy our online service the way that we get to, uh, we get to, the way that we used to. If you are a game provider, if you are an operator, what you want to do is write beautiful, amazing games. You shouldn't be too much focused going beyond what's your competences, like delivering the games, like securing the games. This is something that you can offload to people that just do that. We only do delivery and security. So the good thing about Agmai is that it's offloading this company for something that they need to take care about because customers take it for granted, but it's not their core business. Their core business is doing amazing content, great games. So they should be doing that. Well, I was also going to say thank you so much for joining us here on Sigma TV today. I'm looking forward to talking to you again in the future and finding out more about what Agamai does. But for now, thank you so much. Uh, stay warm mm. over there in Milan. Don't get cold. No worries. It's still a good day today. And uh, I appreciate it. And I look forward to come back at Sigma. It was a very, very... Um, big pleasure for me to talk to you and to have this opportunity and I hope it's going to be next one soon. So thanks. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much, Dario.